I'm good, thank you. Um, so what brought you to this role? Well, I, um, my agents called me and said that they had a script that they wanted me to read and it was a rush and you need, you need to read it as soon as possible. It goes in like a week and so I read it and I just, it was all very quick. It all happened very quick. And the best ones usually happen quick, I know this. Rules of Attraction, this other film I did was like the same way. My favorite ones are this happen that way, but um, where it's kind of spontaneous and out of the blue. But it was that, and I read it and I was floored and I said, I gotta meet this guy, I have to meet Gorn, and I met him like the next day at Cat and the Fiddle on Sunset. And um, and that's it. We just, you know, it was a love fest, and I wanted to do it. And I didn't even know what I was going to do yet. You know, it wasn't even clear to me, like, oh, how am I going to play this girl? And, oh, gosh, you know, but I just, the story was so beautiful that I, I had to do it. And did you, did you have any, like, personal instances in your life that kind of drew you to this material more? Or was this sort of, um, you playing a character? No, no, it wasn't me playing a character because it's not like it was that. I mean, granted, it is like set in this false world of the afterlife of people who committed suicide. So in that way, it's kind of strange. But it's actually re pretty realistic as far as the relationships between people and human relationships and falling in love and whatnot. Um, I related, yeah, on a level that just was personal. You know, in a lot of ways, like I, re I relate to, you know, kind of being troubled enough to sort of wanting to be self-destructive, and then and then regretting it, you know, and 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 also um, finding love in strange places and whatnot, and then also the humor. The humor really got me. The subtle humor. I'm really a fan of that kind of subtle humor. That's not the jokes not thrown in your face, and there is a lot of that in the script. And uh, I know that you guys wrapped in <coughs> August and then you were in Sundance in January. Mm -hmm. So that must have been a pretty exciting experience. It was. That all happened. Th that's why this is actually strange, to be honest with you, because that was two years ago, right? It was two Sundances ago. So you, it's been like we filmed Sundance. That felt in a weird way, kind of like it's the premiere. And then um, now we have this other premiere so it's like two years later it feels kind of strange I'm talking about everything again and I'm like oh wow, I'm forgetting everything um, and you're also in a few other things that are coming up uh, you have actually a number of projects can mm -hmm. you talk about One Missed Call like a pod in Cracktown <clears throat> these things um, One Missed Call uh, directed by Eric Vallette is a remake of a Japanese horror film of course and that comes out January something I don't know the date exactly but um, uh, that's a uh, that's kind of a formula horror film in the sense that it's um, people are getting phone calls, um, missed call. They're seeing missed calls on their phone, and they're getting voicemails, hearing themselves in t some state of terror or panic, which is really them hearing themselves die. And um, it's dated like one or two days later, so they're hearing how they're going to die in a couple of days. And so when you receive this voicemail, it's just kind of like the clock's ticking, and it's just you know one by one they drop, and then I sort of start to investigate. Um, with this detective who's had something similar happen to him with his sister and um, and then of course I get the call and then it just goes yeah. to the end. Um, and you have a few other projects can you talk about uh, as I said Life is Hot and Cracktown or The Heavy? Or... Um, Life is Hot and Cracktown I think um, directed written and directed by Buddy Giovanizio 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 um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, he's going to kill me. Um, that goes to Sundance, I think, this January. And that film's really dark. That's, like, way darker than Wrist Cutters or Love Story. It's about um, just, like, slumming it in Cracktown on the streets. And I play a young, um, young struggling mother, um, like a 19-year-old young, you know, with my young husband who's struggling as well, trying to raise this uh, baby that has colic. And it's, like, struggling sort of atmosphere. And that comes, I think that goes to Sundance January. And then the heavy, I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything about it and I haven't seen it yet because that just wrapped. And I think they're in editing stages right now. So. And I know you used to DJ. Do, uh -huh. you, do you still do that? I haven't DJed, gosh, um, four years plus nine. I've got to get this down. Almost five years. Yeah. So do you miss it? No, not really. Because. To me, for me, it was such a nightlife thing. It was, it was, it's associated with, um, 
you know, the nightlife and, and drinking and stuff, and I don't really miss that so much. I miss dancing. I really like to dance, um, but I don't miss, no, not so much. Okay, and last question. Do you have anything else coming up that you're getting ready to start? I'm shooting this show called Moonlight. It's on Channel 2, CBS Channel 2, and that is, um, God, it's, a ten, it's 9 p.m. Friday nights, and I play a vampire, and that's fun. Cool. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.